Come on, Rob. Let's go, bro. Preach it, bro. It was funny. I was reading an article the other day about, you know, when I was putting this together. And I guess there was this, this pastor. He was on a plane flying overseas. And he was sitting next to this other passenger. And, you know, as you fly, you start to uh, have a conversation. So he's like, oh, hey, you know, I'm a pastor. My name is Bob. You know, how are you doing? You know, Bob. Bob. <laughs> And then the other guy gets up and uses the bathroom. Amen. And then another pastor goes, How exciting for you to be spending all this time with them. And he's like, Why? Who is that? And then she goes, That's Tom Cruise. What? Now, what? You know, we don't know who Tom, Tom Cruise is. I don't know who that is. He has a, a, a birthday movie. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. 007. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sitting next to one of our generations. Outside of the by the Whether you like him or not, he's he's a force to be reckoned with. That's true. Fearless. Jumps off buildings, breaks his knees on camera and all that. Still going. Still going. Wow. He's a phenomenal actor. But imagine being on that flight and not realizing who you're sitting next to. That can be us sometimes. Can you imagine what it must have been like growing up with Jesus? Maybe he wasn't even Jesus and he was just Jesus. <laughs> all the time in Galilee, 30 years, Jesus. growing up. And people just knew, oh, okay, yeah, that, that's, that's wrong, Mary's son. You know, he, he, he's a good fisherman. Or he, you know, he, he builds things. Like, he makes this little thing of hay for my kids. You know, cool. Maybe that's how Jesus was known. But they were around him for years, generations, and never even realized who this Jesus guy was. Right. Imagine if you were one of his neighbors. Oh, like, man. You're like, oh, yeah, hey, how you hey, doing? Your business awesome. is always well kept, <laughs> always helping Mary with the laundry, <laughs> as all kids should, right? Mama. Come on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. 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 All that yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 Just throwing it out there, you know, just your typical neighbor, always yeah. friendly. Yeah. You're walking home, he's like, oh, let me help you there, Miss Johnson. Yeah. Carry the groceries for us. Hey, man. Nice. He's like the perfect neighbor. Never played his music loud. Nothing. He was just awesome. <laughs> but you gotta remember, even when he was a teenager, like he always had this deep knowledge of the Bible. Yeah, he had this deep passion for the scriptures. And he amazed people with that knowledge. But yet no one really had a clue who Jesus was. Maybe Mary did. Maybe Joseph. I know Joseph was, must have been a little sus because he's like, oh, okay, God, you got a baby from God. Yeah. <laughs> you can either have great faith or be like, okay, well, you just, you just, you just, just roll with it, right? But there was a guy named John who kind of knew a little bit about Jesus. In fact, a little bit before Jesus was born, John was born. Amen. Uh, in fact, John was uh, Jesus' second cousin, because I guess Elizabeth and Mary were cousins, yeah. so they made them second cousins, so they were related. So, you know, maybe they, they hung out as kids. I don't know if in, in Hawaii, cousins hang out, yeah. they get into mischief, they play kickball, football in the street, yeah. things like that. And so, you know, they spent a lot of time together. <laughs> You know, and then he became known as John the Baptist. But I don't even think John realized the role that he would have in changing the world. Wow. Yeah, the role that Jesus himself would have in changing the world for him. I mean, there was nothing unique or, or special about <laughs> Jesus. You know, Jesus wasn't small growing up. Jesus was like walking around with his glow on him. You know, it was just normal Jesus. Turn with me to Isaiah 53. Come on, bro. Uh, you know, I love this whole fact that they had no idea that Jesus was right in front of them. The Messiah, the Son of God, 
And they had no idea because he was ordinary Jesus. Wow. Well, In Isaiah 53, verse 2, the Bible reads, He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities, carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, sinned by him, and afflicted. This passage describes a very ordinary guy, a very ordinary Jesus, nothing special about him. The first time that John probably realized that there was something different about his cousin Jesus happened in Matthew 3. Be turning there with me. Come on, bro. This is when Jesus came out to John in the desert of all places to get baptized. I mean, you couldn't get baptized, you know, in the city where it's close. No, it was inside, you go out in the middle of nowhere in the desert, <laughs> a hot 110 degree desert, and get baptized out there in the hot, nasty water. <laughs> but that's where he probably figured it out. But John doesn't even want to baptize Jesus. He's like, no way, man, I should be baptized by you. So let's pick it up in Matthew 3 and verse 16. The Bible tells us as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. My first point this morning is humble beginnings that change the world. This was Jesus' origin story. Like he was my old man Peter Parker, and then he got baptized. This is my son, whom I love. Bam! Spider Man. Yeah. Jesus to Jesus. Just like that. Can you imagine being there at this moment, seeing this all take place? What would it look like? The sky opening and seeing heaven. Oh my God. I have no idea what that would look like. Like, would it be like a tear? Fly through, you know, seeing all these movies. Oh, yeah. And then we hear that voice, this is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Whenever I picture that, I picture God going, ah, you know, this is my son, I'm well pleased with him. Every parent feels like that when they have a kid. Yeah. Like, look, I made this. You know, I can never lose my child now, but he's still my baby. But that's a parent thing. You know, seeing and Jenny, they walk around with their hands like, <laughs> it's awesome. That's how God feels about Jesus. I can't help but wonder how many of us have been in the presence of God for so long and we don't even know it. We don't even realize how oh, old. That's God? What? You know, we forget. Think about when you first came to church, mm. first studied the Bible, mm. how exciting everything was, it right? was bro. You look in the Bible, everything you read was like, wow, Jesus, yo, oh, man, yeah. he did this, he did that, he raised people from the dead, he turned water into wine, like, man, perfect guy to have at parties. But something happened between first getting to know Jesus, and maybe where some of us are at Come on, Rob. Maybe we've lost our zeal. Maybe we've lost on, that excitement for God. I know I've been a disciple for two years. Wow. I'm insane. I lose my brother sometimes, and I need to jumpstart it. Ask Martin. He doesn't probably always wake up. Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe he wakes up every day like, God is good! <laughs> Drink his coffee, open his Bible. He does, bro. Memorizing the song. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe he is. Yeah, maybe he is. Come on, Martin. You got this, bro. Oh, no. Use your imagination. Let's go, baby. Whatever will inspire you. But does God's spirit still make us say, wow? You got to ask yourself. Do I still get excited in the morning to read my Bible, mm, to pray? Come on, bro. You know, I prayed this morning, and I felt like I was talking to my best friend. 
Wow. Because I just had a real talk like, God, use me. I don't know. <laughs> I hope what I'm preaching today is what you want me to preach. Come on, bro. You know, it is, bro. Not, it is. Let me know. And, you know, I don't know. I'm a little insecure. Come on, you know, you got this. When you're up here, you know, people don't realize, like, man, I'm probably one of the most insecure people here. But, you know, I, I fake the funk. You know, I fake the funk. If I didn't tell you that, it's not going to be wrong. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Yeah, yeah. You look at that. It's like, when people see you, do they still see the spirit of God in you? Mm. Oh. Yeah. Cut us, bro. I'm pretty sure Cesar has that spirit. Come on, bro. It's fresh. He got that new Christian smell. Yeah. Jaime yeah. yeah. got that new Christian smell. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best yeah. smell in the car, right? Brand new Jordans right there. Brand new Jordans right there. Then, then you start eating them back in the box. Oh. Man, all the time you know that smell is gone. You can never get that smell back. It's a refresh. <laughs> I pray we don't ever lose that new Christian heart. Come on, Rob. But now that I'm 50, in my 50s, I spend a lot of time Very young, bro. reminiscing. I don't know if this is just me, but you, you, start, you start thinking back. Like, man, I remember the good old days. No, I remember when music was good. I remember when hip hop was hip -hop. Yes, bro. Amen, bro. Preach it, bro. Preach it. I'm not going to go into this for some people like this new wax. Yes, bro. It is what it is. But I, I look at that. Mumble rap. TV shows like Mumble rap. Like, you know, Mumble rap. Like, uh, wow. Full oh, house. Yo, that's going to be rap. Bro, you like Bad Bunny, bro. Come on, Bad Bunny. You know, Bad Bunny. It's different. Bad Bunny. <laughs> Some people mentioned the show, and when kids came to me, I was like, what show was that? Like, you never watched that? It was the 90s. I was bored in the 90s. Like, yeah. Like, we had TV, but we had PlayStation. But you got to remember what you were like when you were young. Come on, bro. As a disciple. We can't live in glory days of, I remember when I was young, and I could do this, I could run, I could lift speakers like everybody else. <laughs> we got to look at, like, where was our heart? Yeah. In the good old days. Come on, and is it still the good old days for you? Mm -hmm. Come on, Rob. You know, I love to remind people that's where our heart needs to stay. Mm -hmm. It's got to stay when it was good, when it was pure, when mm -hmm. it was innocent. Mm -hmm. I can speak for myself that I was grateful to God when I first came out to church. It freaked me out because everybody wanted to hug. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Hawaii, so everybody naturally hugs. But everybody, even the guys are like, hey, bro. And I'm like, oh, hey. You know, I'm trying to like, do a fist bump. And it was weird. But then when you realize that people were doing it because they actually cared about it. Oh. When you come in today, you know, I hope they got weirded out. I hope somebody went, Sparkle. Oh, they had a big hug. And like, I'm all right. That actually blew me to you. Letting people love me. But sometimes, you know, when I studied the Bible, I had a filter in my head that clicked. Like Apple Music, you know how you can turn off profanity? Yeah. I was able to do it easily. Wow. Like, I just stopped. I grew up with hip hop, NWA, Ice Cube. Yeah. Turn it off, stop. Completely. Wow. Now, over the years, you know, you get comfortable, you stick back into your old lifestyle ways, and sometimes. Gangsta, gangsta kind of creeps through. <laughs> 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 you go through it and you fight and you get scolded by birds. <laughs> it's like, amen. But I had these convictions. Come on, birds. <laughs> we all had these convictions back in the day. I used to have a conscience about stuff that I would watch. Like, oh, oh, something happened. Ooh. <laughs> so still there, you know. I'll never forget one time we had a whole, our whole ministry over at my house and we were watching um, Armageddon. You know, the movie Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, and the Meteor. And you know, if you've ever seen that movie, there's yeah. one inappropriate scene in the movie. Yeah. It's not really inappropriate, no. Oh, I guess it is. Oh. It's, 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 it's an exotic dancer. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. And there's all disciples in my mom and dad. And that scene comes on, and all the brothers just went. Oh. And my dad was like. <laughs> and he was weird. You know, but that was my conviction of the time. And so I don't want to spend too much time back now. But, you know, I remember being bold. Bold to invite everybody out to church, and I didn't care what they thought about me. Come on, bro. I was terrified, but I did it. I invited all my friends to study the Bible. Come on, Rob. Every musician I ever worked with in the studio to study the Bible. Lost clients because of it sometimes. Amen. I was like, yep, oh, that's God's way. 
That's his heart. Good heart, bro. But I pray that we haven't lost that heart. You know, if anything, that we still hold on to that. And that we don't get spiritually numb like we do. We just do. We get numb with our job. We're grateful to have it when we first get it. Woo! Mm-hmm. And then we don't care about uh, how we get it. Come on, what bro. you did three years ago when you were broke. <laughs> wow. And we needed that job. Preach it, bro. Preach it. But honestly, guys, I appreciate the fellowship. I do. Sometimes you come into the fellowship and it's dead. Yeah. It's called out. It's dead. It's like, <laughs> First song comes out, oh Lord, oh Lord. And like three people singing. And like, mm-hmm. I still love it though. So what do I do? I gotta just sing loud. Yeah. I'm here for God. I'm not here to impress you. Come on, Come on Rob. Appreciate it, bro. Guys. I appreciate it. But, you know, I don't know. I, I look at that. But even John the Baptist, when he was questioned about Jesus, you know, because after all that stuff happened in the desert. The Pharisees came up to him, and you can be turning to John 1. All the Pharisees came up to John, and they were like, hey, so what's up with this dude, Jesus? <laughs> you know, what's up with Jesus? Like, like well, what's going on? You know, because they're curious. Inquiring minds want to know. In John 1, verse 31, come on, bro. This is John. And this is like a police docket, you know, when he's being interviewed by the Pharisees. This is the transcript. He said, I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you will see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. John lived his whole life with Jesus. They were family. They probably went to barbecues together. They probably played Chase Master or Tag together or some whatever game he played in Israel at the time. But he never really knew who he was. He did. But it was revealed to him by God himself. Wow. Humble beginnings changed the world. Changed the world. You know, look at Luke 22. Now, some people would think, you spend time with Jesus, it affects you. It changes you. It makes you a different person. For many of us here, we, we know who Jesus is. You know, we, we strive to be like Jesus as best we can. In the Bible, they got to see him. They got to see the miracles. They got to see him walk on water. They got to see him raise people from the dead. I don't know about you, but I'd be pretty impressed. He's like the real life Chris Angel that really does miracles. It's not a trick. It's, it's the real deal. And you would think that his disciples would imitate those personality traits. They would have compassion. They would have humility. They would have a heart to want to serve and give to other people. Not be so judgy towards people. Remember the apostles were like, are you not going to cast down fire and destroy them all? You know, like there are instances where his own disciples didn't have this heart. And they walked with Jesus for three years. Luke 22 and verse 24. It's sad, but it even tells us that also a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. All the time they spent around Jesus and they still want to know, hey, 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 who's the greatest apostle, Jesus? <laughs> tell him, tell him to me. <laughs> you know, me. Can you imagine that? It's like, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. like, okay, how can you spend time around Jesus and argue that he's the best? Like, that, it just doesn't make sense. Wow. Imagine Peter, James, John, Luke. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Luke because Luke is the one writing this. He's like, some of them were like, who's going to be the greatest? Wasn't me, but they were arguing about that. So he just threw everybody under the bus. And then Jesus says to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Wow. So Jesus tells his disciples, don't be like them. Don't be like the world. You've got to be different. Amen. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. And the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater? 
The one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you and as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit at my throne, judging 12 tribes of Israel. So Jesus is kind of chill about his response. He doesn't say, none of y'all. He could have, but he, he kind of, you know, he's kind of cryptic like that. He's like, you won't sit on the throne. Meaning there's like multiple thrones. Kind of meaning like maybe you are going to have a throne in heaven one day. You know, who knows? But Jesus' bottom line is he made it a point that he did not come to be, um, do, to be served, but to serve. Jesus, the Son of God, the Lord of the Lord, the creator of everything, is humble enough. He's like, you know what, let me get that water. You know what, let me, let me grab that chair. Let me help set up the sign. Let me do that. You know what I call somebody that always demands to be served? Egotistical. Yeah. Egotistical. The definition of egotistical is excessively conceited or absorbed in oneself. Wow. Self-centered. Kind of sounds like Karen. <laughs> That's the recipe for a Karen. Wow. They, they always expect to get their way. <laughs> They can never be oh, wrong. Everybody's looking at you. And they're never willing to come in. <laughs> right? That's a character. And it kind of makes me never want to work in the, the, the service industry ever again. But you don't have to be in the service industry to experience. Come on, Rob. Oh, yeah. That's all it happens. I mean, imagine working at a place where somebody goes, oh, thank you. And you can say, my pleasure. Chick fil A. Chick fil A. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chick fil A. Let's go, Chris. Imagine you say that. Then you set up the AV. My pleasure. Can you serve in his kingdom? My pleasure. My pleasure. It's big. But a lot of people don't do that. Because your ego is your enemy. Come on, Karen. Come on, Karen. That's my second point this morning is your ego is your enemy. Wow. Preach it, bro. Having ego is the opposite of being a servant. It, it really is. It takes a special kind of character or person to be a servant. You know, you can't think of yourself better than other people. You just have to think of the needs of other people. No matter what it is. You could be a CEO and still help put chairs together. You could be a CEO and still say, oh yeah, come on, you guys go eat first. I'll, I'll eat after you guys. There's That's no true. ego. You don't have to consider yourself better than anybody else. But so many people don't even realize that they suffer from puffed up ego. Prayerfully, there's not too many of that in here. Yeah. Of anybody, I could have a very puffed up ego. You know, and, and, I, and I share that because, you know, I grew up with a very huge ego in Hawaii. You know, I wasn't super, super popular or famous, but I was famous. People wouldn't recognize me. You know, because I'm on TV, I'm on radio, things like that. So you get kind of used to people going, oh, and they want to say hello and stuff. And after a while, it's like, oh, yeah, that, that feels kind of cool. But as a disciple, it was awesome. They're like, oh, yeah, man, what's up, dude? How you doing? Hey, man, you go to church. And all of a sudden, they're like, huh? <laughs> but it was easy. I mean, sharing my face super, super easy. You know, but the funny thing is you can be a servant. You still have an ego. Ah. Because you want to look good. Oh. Like, look at me. Karen's a speaker. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Four chairs. You know? We can all see these memes about the single brother that's trying to date. Sometimes we have that ego. We call that possibility. We call that picking the trunk. <laughs> we just call that deceitful. Hey, you see, you you pick which one suits best. But we can test people with where their ego is at, right? It's easy. Like, who here wants to serve your kids' people? Lift it up. Wow. Near the amount of hands that I expected to see. Why? Are you better than that? Are you too good to babysit? Oh. To help 
shape the future of the kingdom of God? I would serve in his kingdom if I could. I love kids. Yeah, me too, bro. I love being a parent. This guy's steady and sing. I don't like to watch men all day. It's a test of our ego. Would you help with AB at the GLC? Yeah. That's the most challenging time to serve. Because even though I lead the AV, guess what? I still get to register. I still got to pay to work the entire time. I'll be up before everybody and I'll go to sleep way past everybody. Guaranteed. I live on Monster during the whole week. <laughs> and I'm fine with it because that's how I was built. Thank that's you, bro. God designed me. Wow. Wow. Just slurs. I was going to say slave. <laughs> <laughs> I get to serve because I want to make sure it's excellent. Come on, bro. And that's why I do it. Good example. Philippians 2, verse 5. It's one of my theme scriptures that we share with every ministry that we serve in. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. The Son of Jesus who was with God in the beginning of all time, while God worked his thing and made the earth, did not consider himself equal to God, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. See, from Jesus, he became a servant, taking the form of human likeness. Do you think your ego will prevent you from seeing the kingdom of God? Very real question because even though Jesus was ordinary, he wasn't. Mm. Jesus was far from ordinary, and his humility was super far from ordinary. Yeah. All the things that he did, he didn't do it for the likes. He didn't do it for the gram. Maybe a, he did. Like half the time, he would tell people, "Don't tell nobody what I did." Now. Like he would heal people, send them on their way. Don't tell nobody. But you know, people talk, and they're like, that dude right there, he made me see, right there, with whatever color that is, because I'm blind, I used to be blind, I don't know what colors are, the guy right there, he made me see. But I love that because our Christianity should be obvious. At work, at home, at school, around your family, your Christianity should be obvious. And what I mean is, people should not be surprised when you say, I'm a Christian. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I go to church multiple times a week. That freaks people out sometimes. They're like, what? You go more than Sunday? That's crazy. <laughs> Remember? Like, you're supposed to save yourself and you're here. Yeah. Not just yourself. That's that's kind of self-preservation. Yes, bro. It is. Like, I have the word of God and only me. Forget everybody else. As long as I can make it. Some of us are holding on and saying, I'm not gonna let go because if I let go, I might not get the whole back. Okay. And I'm gonna miss the wow. tree. And that's very real too. Preach it, bro. Preach it. But do the people hear your Christianity? Or do they hear something completely different? Come on, Rob. When you're at work, you know. Because we're a church that we have expectations. You know, we're we're a controlling church, just so you know. We're very controlling. We want you to be godly. We want you to be righteous. We don't want you to sin. We want you to have a relationship with God. If that's controlling, guilty. I'm totally guilty. I want my wife to love God. I will do what I can to make sure she's close to God. All right. The guys in my life, I fight tooth and nail. I will die for them because I want them to have a relationship with All right. God. If you call that controlling, thank you, amen. Call it whatever you want. We're so quick to throw labels out nowadays. Because that's what makes people feel good. I don't care. I just want people to be saved. How about you? How about you? Mm. You know, I posted a meme a few years ago that said, walking into church makes you a Christian like walking into a garage makes you a mechanic. Mm. It don't work that way. Come on. Wow. You can pretend you're a mechanic, but you're going to destroy a lot of people's vehicles. <laughs> but how worse by pretending to be a Christian, destroying people's salvation. Wow. There's millions of Preach churches it, out there, millions, wow. that 
that preach the feel good Jesus, the have it your way Jesus, that oh, man. you just gotta love Jesus on weekends and sin out the rest of the week. Wow. And people are okay with that. Now, I'm all for you know spreading the gospel, but you gotta make sure you spread the right gospel. Right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, just, just shut up. Right on. Don't don't say anything. Mm-hmm. You're, you're leading people astray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretending to be a Christian will destroy people. Come on. Mm-hmm. Some of us here could be pretending to be a Christian, oh, wow. pretending to be a disciple. I pray not. But that's why we have discipling relationships. We have friendships in our life to help us make sure that we're on the level of spirituality that Jesus and God expects us. Yeah. I have brothers checking on me, hey bro, how are you doing with your patience? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing with your anger? Oh, I'm doing much better with my anger this week. Oh, good. You know, how's your purity? Awesome. Uh, how's your relationship with your wife? Great. Still messed up. Look at Jesus and his example was obvious. It was obvious. He was sinless. Perfect. 33 years of his life. Come on, Rob. No sin. No attitudes. No lust. Never cussed anybody out. Never even got mad. He got upset and he flipped some tables. But that wasn't a reaction. It was a response. Many of us think, well, oh, Jesus was messy. Well, Jesus sat there and contemplated, made a whip from scratch. That don't happen in 10 minutes. You know, it takes some time. It's kind of like a parent. You know, you never spank your child out of anger. I used to have to stop and why, why are you going to get spanked? Okay, because you lied, right? You know, in my, like, so that process is not for him. It's for me yeah. to calm down. So I don't feel bad. That's so kid. true. Yeah. You know? When I grew up, my dad would be like, oh, fuck. And that's it. And I learned, but now, you know, my mom come knocking at the door. Yes, he will. Hey. Yeah, call. <laughs> but, but why would God choose me? Why would God choose me? Somebody that has a huge ego, super prideful, all of that. I ask myself that all the time. Why me? All the people in this room, why am I the one preaching? I know somebody got more wisdom. I know somebody got some deeper insight on certain things. And yeah, you will have this. You will probably be here coming to church with But you have a question just like that and go, why? Why am I married to the person I'm married to? I don't deserve her. <laughs> Some of y'all are like. <laughs> <laughs> think about Jesus. <laughs> think about Jesus. Living in Galilee all his life. Walking on the Sea of Galilee. You know, maybe that was his daily commute. I would love that. Walking the sand, you know, barefoot. You know. <laughs> it was great. Then he sees these fishermen. James and John. You know, turn with me to Mark 1. Come on around. When Jesus was alone, when walking along the Sea of Galilee, he chose Peter and Andrew. He chose them. He didn't choose them because they went to the University of Galilee. <laughs> he didn't choose them because they were like dressed all sharp. They didn't have a turtleneck like Chris. Oh. <laughs> you know, they didn't have a suit like Omar or like Martin. Come on. They probably didn't even smell good. They were fishermen. But one thing I never considered before putting this lesson together, if you grew up in somewhere for 30 years, you probably know a lot of people. Yeah. I think Jesus might have known them. Maybe he even bought fish from them. He had to. Attention. I don't know. I'm going to ask him when I see him. But maybe they look down upon Christians. And so people always just ignore them. Kind of like you ignore those people like that. Yeah. <laughs> Just like how we ignore those people standing on the corner selling the oranges, like that. selling the flowers, Mama. selling the apple and the Oh, tamales. Yeah. You know what? Oh, they work in cinnamon. Yeah. They do what they got to do to get food on the table, just like we do. Yeah. And they make every opportunity. Now, I guarantee you, they're probably harder working than you are. Yeah. 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 They are. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, Spanish people. <laughs> <laughs> they might, well, 
They have a different work work yeah. ethic. Yeah. 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 Like these fishermen probably did. And that's why Jesus went out and chose them. Mm. In Mark 1. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Simple. That's all they did. The first thing we need to know is that Jesus grew up there and he knew the reputation of these fishermen. But that's who he chose. My last point, guys, is Jesus chose ordinary people. Our walk with God should be anything but ordinary. But we can be ordinary. He chose us. First thing we looked at, Galilee wasn't the most prestigious town in Israel at this time. It was kind of in northern Israel and you know, it was kind of like on the side of the hill country, so it wasn't very prosperous. It, it was kind of, I don't want to say, it was kind of like a looked down upon city. I was trying to think, huh, what city can I use to compare it, but I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> so it was just a, a lower class neighborhood, so to speak. And, he, and it was majority of the, the people that lived there were Gentiles. So you remember Jews, people of God, Gentiles, not the people of God. Ordinary. So there were a lot of ordinary people in Galilee. Wow. There's no wonder God said, I'm going to have Jesus raised up there amongst the ordinary people. He could have made Jesus live in Rome. He could have made Jesus grow up to be some politician. He could have made Jesus become Caesar. How much easier could he have made an influence on the world if he was a king? Mm -hmm. But he chose the different ones. Wow. He chose the common folks, the ordinary people, to make the impact. Why? Why did he do this? First Corinthians, verse one. Come on, bro. I want to kind of close it out here. On, First bro. Corinthians one, verse twenty-six. Come on, Rob. Great job, bro. Brothers and sisters. Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Can I take a selfie? <laughs> Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the ordinary to humble the fight. When I was called, I was a nightclub DJ wannabe producer, thinking I was going to be all of that, you know, trying, super popular like I shared, not super famous, but famous enough where I, I, I met this awesome woman Bird. that I married, it was awesome, two of the most life-changing events <laughs> happened in a nightclub, I met my beautiful wife, and I got invited to church in a nightclub, yes, wow. Wow. how did that happen, <laughs> <laughs> like you're judging me and asking me, how did you get to the nightclub, bro? Because I was DJing in the club, and Run DMC was performing, and a friend of mine, his band, was opening up for them. And after they were done, they came up to the DJ booth, and we were hanging out, and he invited me out to church. So before you judge, uh, God put people in, that was AMS, before there was AMS. But when it came to the Bible, I knew nothing. I knew everything I thought about DJing and nightclubs and how to get the house, how crowded and hype. But I didn't know nothing about the Bible. So why did God choose me? Because I was nobody. I was nothing. I was ordinary. Wow. But here I am, 30 plus years later, still married. Come on, bro. Come still on, bro. Jesus. Woo! And I'm still the word. And I'm still happy. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I am happy. Life doesn't always deal us the cards we want, but when you slow down and you just appreciate, what do we really need from life? Money? Yeah, money comes and goes. I have somebody that's ride or die for me. She's been there for me. Richard, Good job, Mark, bro. Sickness, health. Come on. Wow. Good and bad. Faithful, unfaithful. She's been there. I have an awesome family. You guys. Awesome. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I know no matter how much we fall, you guys will be there. Because when you fall, we're going to be there. That's what family does. And just because we're not related, we're not the same color skin, we don't have the same upbringing, so what? God made us family. That's right. God made us all That's right, bro. each other. We might think we don't have what it takes. That's okay. Take the shot. 
Take your shot. You don't think you can preach? Try it. You may fail. You may be horrible, but you'll get better. Yeah. You should have heard me when I first started this. <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> Luckily, I did this years and years ago, so none of you had to endure that. <laughs> my Bible talks were the worst. The way I used to do Bible talks, I used to take my Bible. True story. And I'd be like, all right, guys, how's everybody doing? Okay. <laughs> and I would read a scripture. <laughs> Whatever scripture I turned to, if I had the bookmark right there, that's where I would land. It's like, okay, so let's look at Jehovah. <laughs> and I would try, I would make it up on the spot because I wanted to let the Holy Spirit. I didn't want to do it on my own. You know, you learn. You learn. Come on, Rob. <laughs> But I look at the fishermen that Jesus called. They had traits that nobody else had. They were hardworking, they were willing to learn, and they were just willing to do whatever it took. That's the fisherman mentality. Jesus didn't choose kings for a reason. How are you going to teach a king to be a servant when they've been served their whole life? Wow. As a disciple, we have to be willing to get our hands dirty. We have to be willing to stay up late. We have to be willing to come and hang out with a team that you have probably nothing in common with. Wow. I'm not hanging with anybody. I'll figure it out. You know? I mean, I'd be the best at Call of Duty, but, you know, I'll just put Brothers, you know, I'll just put Mash, whatever. More combat, I can. <laughs> Madden, sure. And being 2K. You know, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. But you gotta be relatable. You gotta allow yourself to be loved. I don't like basketball. Yeah. Whoa. What? Whoa. What? Whoa. Whoa. Fire away. Crucify me. I'm like a friend. Crucify me. Yeah. You know what? Crucify me. I also go to a basketball game to build a friendship. Yeah, bro. There you go. I will sit there and watch the finals. Not understanding. Why, why did they follow? Why did they time out? Like this last five minutes takes like uh, 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know. Come on, I'm going to tell you. Anyway, yeah. 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 I had to figure it out, you know? Uh -huh. You know, so just kind of closing out, like, oh, you remember right. Men in Black? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Was trying to, and he was in the room with all the other wannabe agents. Yeah. And he's like, Why are you here? You be the best thing to serve. And he's like, Okay. And he makes fun of them, right? Yeah. And who did they choose? Him. Wow. Maybe he wasn't the best, but he had what it took. Yeah. And he didn't even learn. Yeah. He, was, he understood that I don't have to be the best. Because some right. of those guys probably thought they were the best. Oh my God. Just like Top Gun. Yeah. You have to be able to be taught. You have to be able to learn. So true, bro. And that's why Jesus chose, chose every one of us. Come on, because we're imperfect. You know? But he can use imperfection. If we came up here like I'm all that, my my lessons are always awesome. We're doomed. Yeah, we're doomed. Wow. So as you leave service today, guys, I want you to keep this in mind. No matter how flawed you are, Jesus chose you. No matter how poor of a speaker you think you might be, Jesus chose you. He chose me to share this message today. I hope this was the message he wanted. Go ahead. But remember, we all came from humble beginnings. And every one of us has the ability to change the world. You may not think about it, but Jaime's world has changed. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be. Crucify that ego. Crush it. There's no room for ego in, in, in the discipleship. Yeah. Come on. And of course, Jesus specifically chose ordinary people like you. Amen. To move the world. And I love you, fam. And I love you. Come on.